Hi, it's Wesley with 22 Zines, and welcome to day eight of International Zine Month with a very fun prompt. The official prompt from the official list is cook with a recipe you found in a zine. Um, so among my zines, without going through every single one, I knew definitely of two recipes. One came from Eternal Nap, which is a really great zine that I will talk about later, because I didn't end up going with that one, <laughs> although I was very tempted. The recipe in that zine, by the way, was called Funeral Pie, and it's like an Amish pie that they that the Amish serve at funerals. And I was very tempted to go with that one, and I do love making pies, but it had a lot of nuts in it, like a very high proportion of nuts, and I'm allergic to nuts, and although you can do substitutions, I just didn't really want to deal with that. So instead, I went with a recipe from Thrifty Times, uh, which is an excellent local zine about thrifting, thrift store shopping, and it's really, really fun. Uh, this is the Germany issue, and the recipe is from the kitchen, cherry tort. Uh, the story is a little bit about when they went to visit Germany and had a few different Black Forest cakes, um, or Schwarzwalder Kirchtorte, um, and basically... Then when they got back, they found this recipe that is supposedly a Black Forest-style cherry tort from Betty Crocker in 1963. Oh no, I'm sorry, not Betty Crocker. Better Homes and Gardens. My mistake. <laughs> um, so, Better Homes and Gardens, 1963, had this recipe for a cherry tort Black Forest-style. And as they point out, it really is, I don't know where they got Black Forest style. I think just because it has shaved chocolate on top of it and like cherries in it, because <laughs> this is not anything like a Black Forest cake, which became exceedingly clear as soon as I started making it. It's basically just like a layered sponge cake with this sort of uh, cherry filling. It's like a um, an alcohol soaked, like a, a, it, a brandy soaked. Okay. Um, Kirsch actually, I had no idea what Kirsch is, but apparently it's like a type of alcohol that's similar to brandy or something. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not really a drinker. Um, but anyway, it's alcohol soaked cherries as a filling, but, uh, uh, yellow, regular sponge cake, buttercream frosting, and a, uh, just a shit ton of shaved chocolate on top of it. And that's the recipe. So um, this is the one that I ended up making. Uh, I'll go ahead and just cut to the video. I have a little time lapse of me making it. You get to see my kitchen and a couple of my roommates. Uh, <laughs> and then we'll uh, talk about how it went. <laughs> Here is the final 
finished product. <laughs> Stunningly beautiful. <laughs> Better Homes and Gardens would be proud. Better Homes and Gardens approved. This fucking... Oh god, I'm dripping cherry. Okay, this is gonna be a little awkward, but this is the best way that I can think to film this, because this thing is dripping cherry all over. This is the biggest plate I have. It's pathetic. It's just like a regular-ass dinner plate. Um, <laughs> but here we go. It looks straight out of the 1960s, and... I'm sure it tastes straight out of the 1960s. I haven't tasted it yet. I tasted a little bit of buttercream, um, but that's about it. And this buttercream, it's it's real buttercream. It's got like four and a half cups of powdered sugar to a half pound of butter, and it's like <laughs> it's kind of sickeningly sweet, like like disgustingly sweet. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna dive in here. I'm just gonna bite it and <laughs> fucking see how it turned out. I have a fork around here somewhere. There we go. Fork. Fork. Um, alright. Here we go. Alright, I got some of the sponge cake and one of these cherries that's fallen out. Oh my god. Alright, are you ready? Are you ready? Here we go. Oh. <coughs> All right. Uh, first impressions. These cherries are pretty fucking disgusting. I mean, I guess there's a reason that I don't drink. Because this is what alcohol tastes like, and I hate it. <coughs> oh, God. That is not good. That is not good. So, so like, the, the, the jelly interior part is made from canned cherries, as according to the recipe. And I don't know if canned cherries have changed over the years, but <laughs> these are completely disgusting. They're not like maraschino cherries or anything, but they're certainly not quite the same as these cherries on top, which are fresh. Oh, I didn't even get any cake in that bite. It's just like all buttercream. There's way too much buttercream on this too. I made as much as they said. I followed the recipe to the best of my ability. Like pretty much the only thing I had to change was I couldn't get Kirsch, so I got brandy instead. Um, and I didn't have two round cake pans, so I had to use one round and one square. <laughs> The sponge cake is all right. It's a little dry. That might have just been because I left it out and because this is like the edge. I finished just making making this last night and I was just like exhausted. I mean, the cake is fine. It just tastes like a regular yellow sponge cake. Vanilla icing. Except that this icing is so Fucking sweet. What was wrong with people in the in the sixties? Mm. This is a semi sweet chocolate on the top. And uh it's alright. It's maybe the best part of this whole thing. Crap. I don't know what the hell I'm gonna do with this whole friggin' cake. Cause none of my roommates really like cake. Why did I make this? <laughs> Damn you, International Zine Month! Alright, I'm gonna stomach one more cherry here. That one wasn't so bad. Maybe just because it was like one out of the... Alright, we're getting to the bottom layer of sponge cake here. No. Every time I take a bite, I'm like... This isn't really going to be that bad. And then I take a bite and it's like, okay, this isn't a... Uh, oh, never mind. It's really bad. <laughs> okay. Um, let me just pop one of these cherries on top. Oh. Hmm. The, these cherries on top are a lot more tart than the rest of it. In fact, they're like... 
Maybe if I had used these fresh cherries and cut them up, the whole thing would have been more tolerable. But I don't know, because this buttercream is insane. And I have a sweet tooth. I am not averse to sweets by any means. But something about the, like, the buttercream and the, and the, like, the syrupy cherry interior. Plus the cake is a sponge cake, which means it has a much higher proportion of sugar, like, relative to the flour. Um, so that's, like, way sweeter than normal cakes. Alright, this is gonna be my last bite, guys. Hmm. Yeah. Well, um, all right. So my review of this recipe, it tastes like someone took straight up refined sugar, like white refined sugar, and made it even sweeter somehow. Like, you know how when you just taste sugar, that is not the sweetest thing you could possibly taste. This is the sweetest thing you could ever fucking possibly taste. This seems like the sort of thing that you'd have in a shit diner that hasn't, you know, changed its menu or developed anything in the last 80 years or whatever, or whatever. like that, that they, or, or, you know, they, they, they got this recipe straight out of the Better Homes and Gardens cookbook and they've been serving it by the slice, you know, and the slice is probably as big as this whole friggin' cake and they've been serving it by the slice at the same diner. That's, uh, <laughs> that's what this tastes like. Um, the brandy, it is not as noticeable as I thought it might be, except when it is. <laughs> I don't know how else to say that, but, like, you don't, you either don't taste it at all, or it is the only thing you taste, and it is completely overwhelming, and me just being a lightweight who doesn't drink, it's, like, <laughs> it's really unpleasant. Uh, the chocolate on top is good. The sponge cake itself is fine. Buttercream, a little too much. I think if I'm going to try to salvage this at all, I'll probably take the whole thing apart, scrape off all of the crap on top, and scrape off all of the cherry filling, and just eat the sponge cake with what little remnants of buttercream I couldn't get off of it, and hope that's alright. And if not, this, uh... I'd say this is one for the dog, but dogs can't have chocolate, so I don't know what I'm going to do with it. <laughs> so that was that, and that was the recipe. If on the off chance you want to try it for yourself, I will go ahead and upload a scan of this page so that you can try out the recipe for yourself, or, you know, I highly recommend that you pick up Thrifty Times anyway, whether or not you want to try this recipe, um, any issue you like, because they're all excellent. Um, if you are not so daring and you aren't that interested in trying to kill yourself from a, an overdose of sugar in two bites of cake, then, um, I have a little free mini zine. <laughs> uh, this mini zine is one that I've found that I think fits the category, uh, very well, and it offers uh, a couple different recipes that you can try out yourself, and the title of this scene is Entomophagists Illustrated, and it offers recipes for uh, the best double chocolate cookies. It has a section called Liven Up Your Cheese Platter, and uh, How to Shuck a Cricket, and a Mealworm Taste Test. So lots of fun stuff. The uh, cookies... I have not tried this recipe. Please let me know if you ever do. I'd be very interested to find out how good they are. Double chocolate cricket crunch cookies. A uh, recipe for two dozen of those. And there's also recommendations on um, what sort of insects you can pair with your cheese platter. It's a very interesting and rich uh, little mini zine. So I'll go ahead and link that below. Again, that is Entomophagists Illustrated. And just in case that doesn't appeal to your palate, I will also link the place where I got the scene from, which is a little uh, collection of zines from the Small Science Collective, and they have a whole section on free-to-download food zines. I think most of them are mini-zines, and there's information about the food industry 
and recipes and just lots of fun little food zines. Thanks for joining me on that culinary adventure, and I will see you tomorrow for the next day of International Zine Month. Bye.